Hey, I'm Antonio Graceffo, and this is Martial Arts Odyssey. Today, I'm in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm with my very good friend, Christoph Klugston, the boxing linguist. Christoph is a professional fighter with over 70 matches, including the K-1, the Grand Super Bowl of kickboxing. Christoph is also a linguist who studied over 20 languages and is conversant in nearly every linguistic theory I can imagine. I've always prided myself on being the guy who could beat up all the other linguists, but I think Christoph's got me beat. What's one of the issues about training in the tropics? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, number one, of course, is heat at, at that page. You know, thermal regulation is what it's called in a physiology degree. Uh, because we, even in, even runners at uh, around 60 degrees Fahrenheit are spending over 80% of their energy in a cooling mechanism and only 20% of moving themselves forward. Now up that to, to 100 kilos and and you're and you're doing more than running because you're just uh, just moving your legs, you're moving, you're doing everything, and you're also getting you know mentally. What people don't realize about fighting is it's mentally hard because you're worrying about getting hit. Something you don't have to worry about is cycling or, or or running, you know. So a lot of people don't realize it's the it's the thinking process that's so hard. It takes a lot of energy out of people, you know, and uh, the threat, the threat of uh, getting hurt. That's one. That's really difficult, and so that, that adaptation and your, and your plasma thinning out scientifically takes a while. And you know, we're, we're not really we're not really based on it. Well, we should we should be fighting in the snow. You're not on a language quest. Why? <laughs> I'm not on a language. I am on a language quest, but only about the world languages because you know it's predicted in the next what 20 to 30 years that only five are going to be really important because of G and I speak most of them. Uh, <laughs> but he goes after uh, the guy holding the camera uh, is uh, after the geo-locked languages, as we say, which is uh, only good. It's like the money. It's like having having the kip in, in Laos or the reals in Cambodia. The money's only good there. You certainly can't use the kip. You can't use the kip in uh, you know Switzerland, can you? No. Geo-locked languages. Basically, he's saying Antonio's an idiot for learning Khmer. Uh, <laughs> that's one of them. Uh, that's one of the languages. But uh, where can you use it? You know, where can you use Khmer? Khmer is very useful in uh, Cambodia, and some small parts of Thailand, and a couple of poor places in Vietnam. <laughs> Okay, but more useful, as you know, is, is Mandarin, which is which is really the way of the future. Everybody out there, learn Mandarin. I strongly agree. Everybody must learn Mandarin. It's, it's, it has to be done. Spanish, you better know Spanish because that's the whole new that's the whole new world. Spanish were very good at conquering people, kicking their ass. The politics were so good, you know, and, and the conquistadores were kind of idiots. They were trying to kill each other in South America quite a bit. But besides that part. You know, the, their fighting methods were great, so they took over everybody. That's why everybody speaks the way. Over 21 countries officially. officially you know. And so many street gangs speak Spanish, and they know how to fight. Yeah, well, but not correct Spanish. They need some lessons. They're, they're, they're grammatic, I know, is correct. But, uh, uh, I never learned the word bato in my Spanish class in school. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's new world stuff, too, you know. I speak uh, from, from the real, real Spanish. Right. All right, let's segue into fighting a little okay. bit. Kristoff in addition to being an insane polyglot and uh, like a really twisted linguist, the guy is a savant about fighting. And that is a quote. That is a quote from Robert. Mr. Robert M. Klein, oh, Klein, host of The Art of Fighting, who said, Christoph yeah. Klugston is a savant about fighting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's what I've been doing you know, a long time, researching. And I'm really occidental oriented. Why? Because it's been more performance skill outcome based. The whole history of, of warfare in the West has been performance based. You, you don't just write things down traditional, you know. You know, for example, in, in China and Japan, they, oh, I woke up today, I saw some flowers. I walked around a bit and I looked at some more flowers. They write all that down and everybody gets trapped in the tradition. They don't, they don't innovate and evolve. In the West, they had a saying uh, during the dueling period, it's the Renaissance also, that the, the true and perfect methods will win out, the, the lies will not. So if you're using false methods, you're just going to die. 
there was no reason to write stuff down because if you were if you were doing the right things, it's going to continue. If you're doing the bad stuff, you're going to die. So no one's going to follow your school because they were actually fighting for their lives. So yeah, I've been doing that, and I've been um, yeah, it's strange. But I'm in Thailand and. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, training, trying to find people with the same mindset, which is very difficult. This guy's got a crowbar and a screwdriver. That's all he's got. He doesn't have a socket wrench set, you know, so you can only work with the tools he has, and they don't do that. One of the problems, whereas the Western people do, you know, it's, it's very locked in to do it this way, cookie cutter approach, you know, cookie cutter approach, instead of maximizing your own potential, which is very strong, like say in Holland or in France. Uh, is to take what the person has and make them better with that, with those attributes, with those tools. It's like, I work a lot of guys' corners, and ties will come up to them and yell them in between rounds, do this and do that. It's like, look, do. And that's why the people get paid a lot of money, uh, <coughs> like, well, before Custom Auto, you know, Angela Dundee, because they're at a different level. They're about strategy and technology and applying what the person already has, not at the mechanics level. Because the mechanics level is, you know, low, it's low. And then when you come up, that's what's missing, I found, in, in, in this part of Asia. I mean, Japan has some, because they've paid a lot of people to come there, and they've upped their game a lot. The MMA game is very high. And, uh, but they're missing, they, they're, they start at the, they're only talking with the mechanics, you know, how to kick, how to elbow, how to meet, not the application, not the drills. Like, we've got guys like this right now. We're going on right here, right now. This, this, you'll never find this in, in Thailand, talking like this. <laughs> the drilling, this is uh, like a beginning level drill here, with only the punching. But this is missing in uh, this is missing completely in Muay Thai. They do not have partner drills. Uh, they, they, this is just one thing. And this is one of the reasons why the, the Dutch are so good. Is because you know, really uh, the Dutch school of K1, well, the Muay Thai of Rob Common, basically was the guy who really found it. And, and they have a big, strong savat influence, and they have a Kyokushin influence. So the, they common beat people by constant movement and throwing combinations and also very strong low kick. And like everyone wants to think of the Thais as the low kick masters, but it's the Dutch. <laughs> so Christoph, how many how many fights have you had? Well, uh, prof uh, professionally, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, seventy and a couple exhibitions. I think that, that but that's that's including uh, I've done the boxing, I've done the boxing, I've done K1, I've done Muay Thai, I've done shoe boxing. Shoe boxing was really probably my best thing back when shoe boxing had different weight categories. Now it's like at one ca weight category. Um, that was pretty soothing. I was world rated number one. For that for a while. Final thoughts? Yes. Uh, keep watching. Uh, keep watching Antonio's martial arts odyssey. Uh, buy all his books. Uh, get a signed copy. Yeah, those are only like another what five dollars. What is it? Signed copies are five dollars more. That's a pretty good deal. And if you get two books, I think it goes down to three fifty or something like that. It uses PayPal, so you want to make sure. It's just, uh, I told him he, his business side's been sucking, so you got to help him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm poor. <laughs> yeah. So am I. But uh, and uh, oh, I'm in Black Belt, uh, March, March, March issue, 2002. So am I. Uh, yeah, but I got a big article. I have a column. I got, I got pictures. <laughs> We're in Black Belt magazine. <laughs> Buy it now. It's out actually. It's out already. The new one. The new one's out already. So you can read my column, and then after you've done that, you might look at there's some kind of a story about Christoph. Yeah, yeah. It'd be easier to find mine because it's bigger uh, stuff. Uh, mine, my, mine's regular column. Like I have my own regular column. Place. Yeah, regular. One, two, three, four.